Whether you're headed to the beach or to the job site, a good cooler can make all the difference. And now coolers have come a long way since I was a kid with those giant aluminum monstrosities where the hinges were always rusty and the latch was always broken off. They've come a long way, but so it was the price. You know, you can get coolers now that are $1,250 if you want to, but do you need to spend a ton of money on a really expensive cooler if it doesn't suit your needs? Well, that's what this video is seeking to find out. I have bought five coolers, all approximately the same size, anywhere from 20 to 25 quarts. It's very difficult to find two coolers that are exactly the same size in order to help you decide which one's best for you. A lot of these have unique features which maybe you need or maybe you don't need. Do you have to use it as a stool? Do you wanna use it to measure fish on top? Do you need a drain plug? These are all the things that we're going to discuss today. And I've done some testing, all kinds of good stuff. At the end of this video, you should have a good idea of which of these coolers is best for you. We're gonna be comparing performance, features, and value. But first, let's introduce the contenders. The Yeti Rodi 24. Probably the best known brand of the lineup is Yeti, and for good reason. For most people, Yeti was the brand that redefined how good coolers can be. Of course, they also redefined the price, with their most expensive models costing over $1,000. The Orca 20 Quart. Orca is a very similar appearing option to Yeti, but made exclusively in the USA. It matches the Yeti's price, but does it match its performance? The RTIC, or pronounced Arctic, 20-quart hard cooler. Often seen as the budget version of Yeti, I've always wondered if they perform 90% as well for about 30% less money. The Raleo 21-quart. I've never heard of this brand before, but I wanted to include a totally off-the-wall option. At under $100, it sure seems promising with a lot of the features of the more expensive models, but at less than half their price. The Igloo BMX 25. Igloo is a recognizable name in coolers, and I've owned my fair share over the years. It costs only 75 bucks, and it boasts a ton of great features. My prediction before testing was that the Yeti would win most tests, but be equaled by the Orca, which appeared similarly built. Not far behind would be the Arctic, making it a high value option with fewer bells and whistles. Finally, the Raleo and Igloo would probably come in last place since they're the least expensive, and often you get what you pay for. The tests performed on these coolers were meant to show their strengths and expose their weaknesses. Insulating ability, portability, features, price, and warranty are the components which can all make the difference when choosing a cooler and the one that best suits your needs. Is it worth spending $200 on a cooler with a lifetime warranty when it'll only be used once or twice a year? It's worth getting the model which meets your requirements, not just the most expensive one. Which cooler insulates best? For this test, I wanted to simulate a typical day at the beach or a picnic on a sunny summer day. The day of the test was clear and it reached a high of just over 80 degrees Fahrenheit. I placed a five pound bag of ice inside of each cooler along with a digital thermometer and I placed them all in a row at six o'clock AM on the sunny side of my house. At peak temperature around 3 o'clock p.m., I took readings from each cooler one at a time and then brought them inside my garage at approximately 6 o'clock p.m. I recorded their internal temperatures a second time and visually checked the amount of ice left in the five pound bags. The results were interesting. At midday, the Yeti recorded the lowest temperature at 43 degrees Fahrenheit, while the Raleo and the Igloo were the highest at 46 degrees each. The difference of three degrees isn't much, and it's unlikely you'll notice any real difference in use, but something I failed to take into consideration was the color of each cooler. Ideally, each cooler would have been the exact same color to reflect or absorb the same amount of UV light. However, the darker colors of the Raleo and the Orca might have been a contributing factor in the higher temperature readings midday. The Yeti and the Arctic, on the other hand, were lighter in color and likely had a lower surface temperature. All this to say that if you want the best performance in the sun, go with lighter colors if you can. After the sun had begun its descent, I brought all five coolers into my garage and then left them there for an hour. When I recorded the temperatures one final time, Yeti was still the winner at 32 degrees, besting the second place holders, Orca, Arctic, and Raleo by nearly 10 degrees.
The bags of ice confirmed these findings with the Yeti clearly having more solid ice left in the five pound bag, with the others approximately the same amount of solid ice each. Overall, the Yeti clearly won this test, recording the lowest internal temperatures each time. Even though it may have been aided by its lighter color, I would have expected equal results from the Arctic, being a similar shade in saturation. Even though the Yeti kept the internal temperature best, I was still impressed by the performance of the Igloo. Even handicapped by a darker color and no lid gasket, it was still within one degree of the Orca, which cost more than double the price. Once you load up your cooler, you've got to move it. When you must walk from the parking lot to a beach or picnic table, portability matters. The portability of a cooler is determined by a few factors, but most importantly, our weight and handle design. The lightest of the bunch is the Igloo at nine pounds, 10 ounces, thanks in part to its blow molded construction and thinner wall construction. The lighter weight is noticeable and it makes a difference where you can actually use this cooler. In fact, it's the only one I'd consider bringing to the job site where the walk from your truck to the job site can be considerable. Next lightest is the Yeti, coming in at 12 pounds, 12 and a half ounces, and featuring the most unique handle of the bunch with a woven nylon strap on rotating mounting points. It's an interesting solution, and one which carries very well compared to the traditional cooler handle. It also appears to be replaceable if the strap breaks, which is unlikely judging by its thickness and substantial feel. One downside is that it's tricky to get a two-handed grip unlike the metal squared off handles. The strap can sometimes interfere with the lid, however, so just make sure it's tucked into the front or the back before opening the cooler. It also features molded side handles, which make grabbing the cooler from the sides easy. The Raleo is next heaviest at 13 pounds, 8.7 ounces, which is impressive considering that it's as full featured as the heavier models and even sports a metal bottle opener. The handle is standard fare stainless steel with rubber foam grip, but anybody who's used something with foam rubber knows that it doesn't tend to last very long. It either tears or eventually dries out and becomes brittle, so in time, you'll just have a rather thin metal bar to hold on to. The Orca tips the scales at 16 pounds, nine and a half ounces, and this bad boy feels all of that and then some. The handle is typical stainless steel foam rubber, but it's approximately double the thickness of the Raleo or Arctic. This makes for easier carrying and feels in proportion to the cooler's heft, especially when it's loaded up. I wish that it had molded side handles though, since it can get quite heavy at capacity. Finally, the heavyweight of the bunch is the Arctic at 17 pounds, 10 ounces. It's a tank. Unfortunately, they used a very similar handle to the Raleo, which feels inadequate when you have this thing packed with ice and beverages. For a nearly 20 pound cooler, I think they should have gone with a more robust handle since this could easily weigh 50 pounds or more when loaded to capacity. It does have molded side handles, which make carrying it without the top handle easier, but those side handles don't have a recess like the Yeti or the Raleo. Each cooler has its unique features and benefits. From rulers to bottle openers, this may be the most important segment depending on your usage. Do you need to tie it down on a quad or a boat? Does it need to double as a seat or a standing surface? Will kids need to be able to operate the latches? These are just some of the things to consider when choosing the right hard cooler. Extremely full featured and customizable, the Yeti can be outfitted with a cushioned seat top, internal tray and tie down kit, which are all available for purchase. The cooler as it comes stock is clean and simple with its nylon strap and latch closure. Those latches are what Yeti calls their quick latch system and are the easiest to operate by far. These are the only latches that my five-year-old daughter could open easily and they take very little force compared to the others. One feature absent from the Rode 24 is a drain slash pressure release plug. This wasn't really an issue since the cooler is light enough to simply tip over if you need to drain it, but if having a drain is essential for your needs, you may want to consider some of the other options. The Yeti Rode 24 is made in either the USA or the Philippines and features a five-year warranty. The Orca 20-quart cooler is a solid little fellow with a fantastic mesh cargo back pocket. This is especially handy for keys or other small items you may wish to keep secure but not necessarily want inside the cooler itself. It has an integrated drain slash pressure release plug and slip resistant feet. The latch closure is a very on-brand rubber tail design which works well. It keeps the lid secure and sealed, but can be a little tricky to open, especially for those lacking a kung fu grip. The Orca 20 is made in the USA and has a lifetime guarantee. The Arctic has a lot of the same features we've seen in the other models, slip resistant feet, tie down slots, and handle lock. It also claims to have a slip resistant surface which is capable of being used as a casting platform and a very nice V-shaped channel in the base to drain out water easily. 
The latches are rubberized ball and socket type, which are secure, but do take a little bit of effort to put into place. The Arctic 20 quart is made in China and features a lifetime warranty. There is a lot to like about the Raleo cooler, including a metal bottle opener beneath the lid, 16 inch ruler and cup holder on top, slip resistant feet and drain slash pressure release plug. Raleo is a brand sold exclusively through Amazon and use eyelet style latches, which are easier to use than the rubber ball and socket type. The handle also has a nice little centering lock mechanism which keeps the handle in its upright position. The Raleo 21 is made in China and warranty information wasn't really available on the Amazon page. The Igloo sports a ruler on top for measuring a fish or a sandwich, or a fish sandwich. It has four tie down points in case you need to secure your cooler to a vehicle or vessel. There's stainless steel in key areas like the front kick plate and the screws, along with slip resistant skid pads at the bottom corners. The Igloo BMX 25 is made in China and features a three-year warranty. The Yeti Rodi 24 is $199. The Orca 20 quart is $199. The Arctic 20 quart is $139. The Raleo 21 quart is $99.97. The Igloo BMX 25 is $79.99. If you're looking for the best overall hard cooler, it has to be the Yeti Rodi 24. With its thoughtful features, best in group insulating properties, and available accessories, it's the one I'll be keeping for myself. The fact that it's a slightly taller design means that using it as a seat is easy, and the lighter weight, along with those latches, mean that it's the most user-friendly of the bunch. The downside is that it's also priced the highest, and these models are currently made in either the USA or the Philippines without the ability to choose the country of manufacture. The budget pick is definitely the Raleo 21 quart. This cooler kept on surprising me. From its low price to the build quality and features, it's definitely the best value of the bunch. You get handy features like a bottle opener and drain plug, and this could very easily be the last cooler you'll ever need. The only drawback could be dealing with Amazon to get replacement parts or a warranty replacement should you need it. Of them all, the one that I'd bring to the job site would be the Igloo. It's small, lightweight, but keeps the contents cold and even looks the part. The stainless steel should hold up well, but I wish it had a lid gasket and I'm concerned at how durable that handle will be in the long run. It feels plenty sturdy now, but construction sites have a way of destroying even the most durable products. For a cooler priced at less than half of the Yeti, it does pack quite a punch. There's no doubt that coolers these days can do things that were once only imagined. You know, this is the only category of product that really seems like it's better than it ever was in the past. And especially with appliances only lasting 5-10 years and fast fashion making clothing disintegrate before you have a chance to wear it. It's a breath of fresh air to see stuff that's just really elevated to a higher standard based on science. So which one of these is best for you? Please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching this. I really do appreciate it. And I'll catch you next time.